Uh, Guten Erev Shabbos, everyone. We're standing now in Erev Shabbos HaGadol, the great Shabbos of the year, Shabbos Pashas Tzav, and we're getting ready for Pesach. And uh, there's many reasons why we celebrate Shabbos HaGadol. One of the main reasons are that when the Jewish people brought the Korban Pesach, that when they were in Egypt, they, each Jew had to bring the, with his family his own sheep as a Korban Pesach. And uh, they all prepared it on Shabbos. Shabbos was then the 10th day of Nisan. And four days before at Pesach, they had to bring the carbon, they had to gather the carbon Pesach, bring it, bring it into their home. And the Egyptians asked them, what is going on? And they said that we're doing this because Hashem said that he's soon going to take us out of Egypt and strike the firstborn. So one miracle is that the Egyptians didn't do anything. They couldn't do anything to them. The, the wor Egyptians worshipped sheep, and uh, the Jewish people told them they're going to slaughter their, their idol, but they couldn't do anything. Not only that, not only they didn't do anything to the Jewish people, but the Egyptian firstborn went to party and said, listen, you know, in a few nights we're all going to die. Send the Jewish people out. Moshe's record uh, is true on his word. If he makes a predicament, it's going to happen. So they knew from the first nine plagues that when there's a threat, it will become fulfilled. So they tell Pari, let the Jewish people out. Pari says no, so civil war breaks out. The Egyptian firstborn starts striking down the Egyptians, trying to fight to let the Jewish people out. They didn't win, and that is why the Jewish people did not go out until a few days later. But the fact that the Egyptian firstborn themselves struck down the Egyptians, the Egyptians themselves were fighting for the Redemption of the Jewish people is one of the greatest miracles of the of the whole that led up to Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the final exodus from Egypt. Now, the taking of the carbon Pesach represented the Jewish people's readiness. The fact that even though it didn't make any sense, they were putting themselves in danger by taking the self-sacrifice. Nevertheless, they had this readiness to prepare. They had to prepare four days in advance. They didn't go out from Mitzrayim until Thursday. Wednesday night was the Seder. Wednesday night was the 15th of Nisan. They slaughtered the sheep on the 14th on Wednesday, and Wednesday night they ate it. And uh, Thursday they went out, but nevertheless they had to prepare, they had to get themselves ready with the carbon Pesach to show that their mindset, their way of thinking, they weren't any more subject to the exile, to the Egyptian mindset. They were getting ready to jump out, as the word Pesach means to jump out, to jump over. We translate it as Passover, but it really means to leap over. It was a leap of faith that they were ready to take to go out of Egypt. And this is the miracles of, of, of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. The, the, the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim starts, to a certain extent, from Shabbos HaGadol, from the Shabbos before, when we commemorate the fact that the Jewish people got themselves ready, they prepared the sheep, and the miracles already started happening, miracles that were related to the actual exodus. There were many miracles, there were nine plagues that took place before. But the miracle of the actual Yitzhak Mitzrayim took place when they got ready to go out of Mitzrayim. The same thing is we have when the Jewish people were eating the carbon Pesach. The Teda said, gave requirements how they have to eat it. They had to have Mosnechem Chagurim. They had to have their belts tied up as they're ready to go on their journey. Nalechem Meraglechem. Their shoes had to be on their feet. Makelchem Miyetchem. Their sticks had to be in their hand, had to be ready to go. They didn't leave Egypt until the next day. What was this whole, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu knew that they're, I assume they knew that they're not going to leave Egypt right away. So what was, why would they have to be all ready, all set, as if they're about to run out of the house and to fly out of Egypt, and they had to have their sticks in their hands and their walking sticks and their shoes on their feet. The point is Hashem wanted the Jewish people to make a mental shift they have to be ready to leave Egypt. Egypt is, in order to go out of Golos, you have to get ready for Gul. They can't just sit there and eat your supper. And when the time comes, you'll be ready. That's not how you bring Mashiach. That's not how you get out of Egypt. You get out of Egypt by preparing yourself, by making sure you're all ready to go. When you're all ready to go, that's when the leap takes place. That's when the Ebesha took to get out of Mitzrayim. Same thing as a powerful lesson to us. A person could say, you know what, I'll do my thing, I'll, do, I'll make my money, I'll watch the stock market, I'll invest here, I'll invest here. When Mashiach comes, I'll give him my address, I'll give him, my, I'll tell him where to come pick me up, and uh, he'll take me along. Why do I have to worry about Mashiach, get ready for Mashiach? So we learn from the carbon Pesach that in order to bring Mashiach, it's not just enough 
that you'll tell Mashiach where you are, you'll put your name with the GPS and know where to pick you up. In order to get to get out of Golos, you have to get ready, you have to change your mindset, you have to change your allegiance, you have to put your shoes on your feet, put your walking staff in your hand, put your belt around your waist, you have to put yourself in a mode that you're ready to leave any second. That itself is what brings forth the redemption. So the Pesach, the eating of the carbon Pesach, was associated with haste. The haste, the chipozim, was in various levels. The Egyptians were rushing to get the Jewish people out of Egypt. Hashem was rushing, the Jewish people were rushing. But a Jew has to have that mindset, that idea that he's, he's leaving Egypt, he's ready to go out. Connection with this week's Pasha is the word Tzav, the Torah Rashi brings down in the beginning of Pasha's Tzav, that that word Tzav is the different types of, of, of words that could communicate, that could discuss a command. There's deep where most mitzvahs in the Torah don't use the word Tzav, which means command. It says, Hashem spoke to Moshe, Hashem said to Moshe, Dabir al Bnei Yisrael, Emir al Bnei Yisrael, say to the Jewish people, Emir, it doesn't use the word Sabbath Bnei Yisrael, command the Jewish people. All of a sudden, by this mitzvah, in the beginning of Pasha Tzav, it says, Tzav, you should command. So it says that the word Tzav is a zero, is, 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 is a type of wording which signifies that we're encouraging the person, we're inspiring him to do it right away. And he should not only do it right away, he should do it for all future generations. And the Rebbe explains that the term Dibor, Amira, talk, speech, could just mean that I'm telling you about something which you will do at some point. It's important for you to know that one, at one point you'll do it, but you're not about to do it right now. However, the word Sav, the word command, represents that I'm commanding you to do something now. It's, it's the word command, even in English, has a connotation that I'm telling you to do something for immediate um, that, that it should be immediately fulfilled, immediately executed. So this is the point of the Torah that we say tzav, it's a zero, something that happened right away. What does this mean spiritually? It means that sometimes there's certain things you're told that you have to do, but it doesn't touch you so deeply, so it takes time. There's maybe, you'll, you'll have to think about it, you'll decide if you should do it, you shouldn't do it. And then there's certain things that because, because it takes you time, because you're not so sure about it, there's certain obstacles that pop up. And because the obstacles pop up, you might delay it to push it off altogether. When something really touches you deep down, something that's negated to your etzim or something that reaches the core of your soul, you do it right away. You don't push it off. This is something which there's, it, 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 there's no, no obstacles could stand in its way. It, ha it happens right away. And it stays for all future generations. So the lesson of the parsha, so the Rebbe said, something that's negaya to etzim anefer, something that touches the core of the soul, which is what the word sav signifies, the idea of a command, something that happens immediately, represents something which comes from the essence of the soul that encourages a person, inspires a person, that he acts upon it right away. And it, it, he stays like this forever. He's always going to do it. In the context that we're talking about over here, the carbon Pesach, Represented are the Jewish people. The Rebbe doesn't make the connection. I'm just making the connection. The carbon Pesach represents how the Jewish people came from the essence of their soul. They put their life on the side. That their, their lives were in danger in very, very real way. The Egyptians were very angry that they're taking the, their, 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 their idol, their deity, and they're, they're bringing it to slaughter it. And nevertheless, the Jewish people had the self-sacrifice to do it. They said, "This is what Hashem commanded. We're doing it." They did it right away. And they did it with a, a sense of self-sacrifice. And they got prepared to leave Egypt in a way that in a way of quick, they were ready at any moment to leave Egypt. This is the way we have to prepare for the coming of Mashiach. When we're coming to the month of Nisan, to the holiday of Pesach, our sages tell us, The power of redemption is embedded in the month of Nisan in general, on the night of Pesach in particular. So every night of Pesach is, is, is special time for redemption, one for Mashiach and our personal redemption as well. And uh, hopefully the coming of Mashiach will happen now, even before Pesach. But the message of redemption has to be that it's not enough to just, you know, when it will come, it will come. It has to be, a Jew has to be ready. It's just not just enough that we do nice mitzvahs, we do good things in your mind, in your heart. In your, in, in, it has to be in a way of tzav, it has to be in a way of zrizus, it has to be something that touches you in a very powerful way. And as the Pasuk says, Rashi brings it down 
Our sages tell us that the word tzav, zirus is most importantly relevant. A person loses money, a person has to do a mitzvah, he has to give, it a, give out an expense. Money is something which a person puts a lot of effort in. In order to give money, it has to touch the, in order to give money to stuck, it has to touch a person very deeply. So the idea of tzav of zrizus means that something touches a person, he's ready to give away something which is important to him because he feels a deep connection to Hashem. And this is the way we, we experience redemption, is we're always spending the days cleaning for Pesach, whatever, whatever person is doing, preparing for Pesach. It's a very intense, holistic experience. And the night of Pesach comes, and you know, and the Seder happens, two stardom, and then we're back to normal. But no, the point of Pesach is to tell a person that it's a shift in your mindset, that you have to get you have to be ready in a moment's notice. You have to put your belt on, put your shoes on your on your feet. When it comes to Mashiach, it's something which you have to be prepared. We spend two thousand years scrubbing and and, and 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 washing and all the things. We're now ready for the redemption. So we have to shift our focus. We have to be ready to make from our own personal home, just like the Jewish people. In the times of Egypt, they did something very unique. In each Jewish house, they slaughtered their own carbon Pesach, their own sacrifice, and they sprayed the blood on the doors. After the Mishkan was built, they obviously had to bring the sacrifice in the Mishkan. But in Egypt, every Jew made from their own house a Mish- Mishkan for Hashem. So every house on Pesach, we, we scrub, we clean. We're obviously, we're not just scrubbing and cleaning the chametz, but there's a spiritual, spiritual chametz, and a mastery, hatred, anger, negative traits, things that cause divide and separation between one Jew and another. It's all part of the preparations to get rid of chametz and to bring in matzah. Matzah is bittel, self-nullification, self-harmony. A person connects with his inner self. He puts his ego on the side. And he transcends, he's able to make a leap of faith, he's able to connect to Hashem instantly. It doesn't take much, it just takes a person should forego his ego and to make a leap over his ego, a leap of faith. And most importantly, we have to have our minds, we have to be ready for Mashiach. When it will happen, no one will be ready, but at least we should be ready that we're not going to be ready. So we should be, in some way, we'll be ready for it. Hashem should help, we should merit the coming of Mashiach, we should merit the coming out of, going out of Golos, we should have the Shabbos Hagadol, the true great Shabbos, the ultimate great Shabbos is a future redemption, which is compared to Shabbos, a day of rest. And then it will be the true great rest when we will all negative things, not only as the Rebbe says, the ultimate achievement of Shabbos. Shabbos means rest. Rest means all your problems are gone. But the ultimate rest doesn't mean your problems are gone, but your problems are turned into good things. So the ultimate idea of Shabbos is that even negative things are transformed. Like we have in Shabbos Agadah, that even the firstborn Egyptians, they themselves, they represented the might of Egypt. They were the hierarchy. They were the ones that were, you know, the intellectia. They were the, 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 they, they were the, 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 the people that were looked up in Egypt. And until now, they were enslaving the Jews. And they themselves make a 180 degree turn and they fight for the Jewish people's release. That is the transformation that is the ultimate shvisa, the ultimate rest of negative things, and negative things themselves are transferred to good. And the Ebesha should help, we should merit the ultimate Shabbos HaGadol, the Shabbos HaMunuch HaVachai HaYolamim, the eternal, the Shabbos for the eternal Hashem Shabbos, the coming of Mashiach now, have a kosher and Pesach, everyone.